Hi, this is David Wright, and you're listening to WICR. All right, and we're back. And first of all, I want to say shout out to Gabe for coming through. Sorry, uh, we're just in the ever, interview. So man. Gabe does Gabe plays hockey. Oh, you played hockey before, and he knows hockey, so we can get into a little bit of hockey oh, later right, on. Nice. <laughs> later on, <laughs> but yeah. So you guys, before we left, we talked about you know it being polluted, kind of the like Hollywood and the whole people wanting to be actors. Like there's like you said, millions of people trying to to become actors, become singers, become whatever they want to be. But but there's also, you know, limited jobs. So you'll have like your your breakout stars like Lupita Nyong'o who broke out a couple years ago. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence who broke out a couple years ago. So you will have people who break out, but it is definitely hard to do that. It's not and, easy as it comes across, man. It's a mm-hmm. lot of like grind that goes a ton of hours that go behind it, man. Definitely. And now it seems more than ever that it's a little bit harder. So it's easier to get your content out there, but also it's harder for it to become uh, exactly. more popular because yep. it you have, makes it so much more competitive yep because mm-hmm. you have now netflix you have hulu so you have youtube you could put your stuff out that's how Issa ray uh she i think for she insecure, directs produces she insecure she posted uh videos on youtube first she had a little and web then, series actually yep. yeah same with it's a lot of the shows um high maintenance is still the same mm-hmm. high maintenance was an actual web series which you can find on hbo go yep. and they have high maintenance the show so, Issa Rae had Awkward Black Girl, now she has Insecure, the show. Yeah. So it's like, I think it's a smart idea nowadays. Mm-hmm. Ideally, the way I look at it is, I can't. I don't know how the pitching meeting went, but Issa Rae and the creators of High Maintenance probably went up to HBO and were like, all right, we want to make this a show. There's, mm-hmm. there's, there's mutual interest, but look what we have. A proof of concept. A mm-hmm. full series that's a proof of concept. Yep. So this is the basis that you have, so you can rest knowing easy, we know what we're doing. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's why I feel like for me, it's more about testing the waters and actually having a concrete product to go sell in the case of having a pitch. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to go to a company, don't just come in with a PowerPoint slide like it's a class, mm-hmm. obviously. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, also I wanted to ask you, with all the social media and, and content being pushed out there, is, is it going to really affect Hollywood that much? Because they are seeing, well, I believe they're seeing like decline in sales for movies. Oh, it's it's already, it's already totally changed i mean i'm yeah. I, and as, actually i wanted to ask you guys what mm-hmm. you think the like what's going to happen because i don't know what's going to happen with the film i don't know what's going to happen with the digital world because mm-hmm. it's advancing at a rate where no one can keep up with right now mm-hmm. everyone everyone has access to anything now i just don't see i mean i i, I don't know uh, it, it's crazy. I mean, you go uh, up and down social media now. Everything's a video. That's a fact. There's no it, and there's no way to anything that's not a video nowadays. It's hard to attract attention off. Mm-hmm. Right. Everything uh, has to be a video or a picture, even a gif. I right. think that that you would have to capitalize on it as soon as possible. So basically, you have. So what what I was saying, uh, like you see people like Fat Boy on on Twitter. Mm-hmm. You have uh, oh, like Canadians. yeah, you have Dooley. You have um, on a. Bonk, you had what is it? Uh, oh, dang, what's his name? King Bach was one King, of them. Now King he's on wilding out. Timothy yeah, Delegato. so so the yeah, thing you have a lot of those characters out there. So the thing for me is you need to capitalize on their talent now because I saw some of these guys like on Twitter and they, and they're hilarious. Like their skits are hilarious, mm-hmm. and I'm like, whoa, why not do like a Dave Chappelle type show with them? Or you can make it into a show like a comedy show, basically with them just doing fooling around doing skits, or they go throughout their day doing something like. So my thing is that you could create maybe a label or or, or um or your own company and sign these people and then they create content okay. on Twitter and stuff for you or you put it out on YouTube because YouTube is about views it's not about subscriptions um, you could do that or like Issa Rae you could put it on HBO a place where people pay for it or like you know people like John Oliver's on HBO and stuff like that so you so you get to pay for the for basically for their show to watch their show basically so I was like that would be a way to do it but like you said again, like I said again, with Netflix, with Hulu, and all that stuff. So you're gonna have, you know, other companies making their own movies as well. It's not just oh, it's gonna be in theaters. Like I like so. that idea. It's kind of like Comedy Central for the digital age. Even though Comedy mm-hmm. Central does have a really, really good digital presence, you go to their Comedy Central YouTube mm-hmm. page. A lot of clips from shows. Yeah. They, they are on Twitter. They're active on all that stuff. I do think it's like having a kind of like a record label, like you said, for comedians, mm-hmm. and you can have a way. It's good in the sense that. 
I'm not a fan of the contract kind of thing, but it yeah. does offer more exposure because a label obviously gives you the tools to get out there. Mm -hmm. So having all these people who are traditionally just stuck to like five, 15 second Instagram skits, mm -hmm. they could, I think they do have a lot of a lot of potential. That's what I was thinking. As you were saying, I was thinking, why not bring something back like Mad TV? Yes. Or have a skit yep. show with all these different people because Saturday Night Live's been doing it, but why are they the only ones? Exactly, and I love Mad TV. That and that that's just another platform too. Or you could create your own, I guess, website or platform where they could put their own content on there. And then, like you said, now people are paying ten dollars for for streaming and stuff. Mm -hmm. Make them pay the ten dollars for a subscription, like like YouTube. Mm -hmm. or, uh, well, YouTube even has it YouTube now. Red YouTube, now. YouTube Red. YouTube Red. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody, that's I guess that's the way that things are moving. It's crazy now. how things are moving, but I do think I have an answer to where the things are going. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about it one night. I think VR could be sick for movies. Now hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> hear about a slasher film where you can pay for the experience. Either you're the slasher, so it's a first person view. You mm -hmm. can pretty much be Michael Myers, or you could pay 15 and you can be the people who is getting chased by Michael Myers. Have different seats, have different headsets, so everybody who watches it gets a different experience. I think that could be sick. I and I, it's already happening too. I mean, mm -hmm. VR is is blowing up. Mm -hmm. um, the the Alejandro Iñárritu. Uh, the director. Revenant. Yep. Mm -hmm. He he made a VR project, and I think it was the first VR project to premiere at mm -hmm. Con this last year. That's the prize, man. So it's already going there. My whole argument with that is that I don't. I think VR now it, it will be a form of storytelling, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I don't think it's with movies. I don't think it's really going to get involved. I don't think mm -hmm. it's going to really impact movies as much it's as much as it's going to impact video games. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. the idea that you just said, mm -hmm. I don't when you become part of the experience, mm -hmm. I don't see that as a movie. I see that more of like a ride, right, mm -hmm. or a game. Yeah. It's different, especially because the way I propose it, it's first person. At that point, make it a video game. It'd be much yeah. easier. Right. Then you also think about it. The more I put thought into it, it's pretty much you're recording the movie twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a lot of money. But there's it's like the trace, the risk versus the reward, right? Mm -hmm. You put double the money in because you're recording two different sets, sets of scenes, right? Mm -hmm. But does that mean the audience likes your movie enough to pay twice to get the different experience? Right. Mm -hmm. Like, imagine having It Chapter 2. One's from Yo. one, the pers perspective of Pennywise. So you see all the stuff that he has going on <laughs> personally and, like, on the side. Then you have That's the crazy. kids. Yeah. That'd be right. crazy. I want to see it. So I just wanted to go back a little bit. We talked about, you know, making it in the industry. Have you you've heard of the Blacklist? The Yo? show. No, no, no. The... So blacklist is basically the list of of scripts and stuff that don't get picked up by move by uh, directors and producers and stuff like that. So it gets thrown like I think it's on a website and like other people read it and then that's when sometimes those scripts get picked up. So there have been big movies that have been on the blacklist, but and then and then somebody saw it, then they're like, oh, I like the script and I want to pick it up and create it into a movie. Never knew and about so, that. You've never known about? Oh, no, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so and that that was the thing. Who 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 goes on to this? Do producers? Can anyone yeah, go on to it? Yeah. So produce and so basically, you just read the script, and if you like it, then you could adapt into your own film. So this is basically a second chance for for writers and uh, who basically who didn't get it picked up the first time. So somebody could could just view it again, and then they could then they could uh, basically work it into a movie, TV show, whatever they want. You guys seen Bruce? Oh, Bruce is great. Yeah, that's one of the puns apparently is on this list. That was a blacklist that got picked up. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Juno. Yep. Juno. Wolf of Wall Street. That's crazy. Yeah. That's a big one. That's, yeah, that's, nuts. A, that's huge. <laughs> that's huge. Looper. Who wrote the screenplay for The Wolf of Wall Street? Slumdog Millionaire's on there too. Social Network by Sorkin, and then we have the wrestler. Let me see. Wait. Yeah. So is is the script? So it's the script. So the script. So, but uh, but didn't Aaron Sorkin write the Social Network? I guess he might have taken inspiration from. It. I don't understand. Maybe specifically because why? That. Like, why would Aaron Sorkin throw this thing up there? Unless it's like more of like you know, kind of an elite. Group well, of people. so it's 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 a mixture. It's a mixture of all. So maybe that's what I'm saying. Maybe he he took it from somebody Sorkin else. Sorkin himself had been blacklisted. Oh, see, yeah. So so may, somebody didn't pick it up. Somebody didn't like it. I guess he collabed with the writer of the book who initially wrote the Social Network. Mm, yeah. The okay. one who chronicled the entire like biography of I would I guess Mark Zuckerberg. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Mesrich. Yeah. Yeah. So he's got into collaborations with Fincher and him. Fincher are cool. Mm -hmm. To to me, that's a good idea. Cause you know, it's uh, nice. Cause like. Nowadays, the main complaint is that Hollywood's creatively bankrupt. Right. Yes. Things are rebooted. Yep. Things are sequel. Right. Yep. 
And the thing is, I understand it because in the sense, it's a business and you want profit. Mm-hmm. So you want to go with the surest thing. That's why Marvel movies are going to be going on for a while, man. No, Marvel movies will make you money till they... <laughs> Till, yep. till whenever, man. Mm-hmm. Spider Man just made almost a billion. Yep. Avengers, all that. This at the third, doing great, right? But then you have all these new movies that don't really get attention, and the only time they get attention is come Oscar season, right? That's the yeah. thing. La La Land, for example. Yeah, ain't nobody talking about La La Land till it got nominated for all these awards. I didn't even, I, I didn't see it till after the actual awards, right. like till mm-hmm. the actual Oscars or whatever. And even, and even so many of those movies that are nominated for Oscars, they're. You know they're backed by you know the Weinstein company. They're backed by major major film companies. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a ton of film companies that you know you don't even hear of that make mm-hmm. that make really 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 great pieces. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you think there's a need for the Oscars still and stuff like that? I, I always I always viewed. I mean I get. Well, first of all, the Oscars is like, it's like you know it's like the NFL awards. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. it's like they're doing it. You know y- y- you're doing it. They're doing it to celebrate, and not in a, such a bad way, but they're doing it to celebrate their own, right? To, mm-hmm. sh- to recognize the work and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think, uh, on the surface, I think, you know, with how many awards there are now and how many things there are now, you know, you got the Golden Globes, you have the SAG Awards, that means, uh, yeah. M- yeah, MTV Movie the Awards. TV, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. it's, you know, so I, I do think that it's mm-hmm. kind of been diluted. Yeah. Because the MTV Awards, they just had their lowest rating ever. I, I watched a little bit. Katy Perry was terrible, terrible on that, bro. That was, <laughs> yeah. But I, I think that, that people are kind of tired of it. Because, again, the movie that people believe should win doesn't really win well, most that's, of the and, time. And that's, my, that's always my thing with the Oscars, too. Uh, mm-hmm. One of my teachers at, at my acting school, he always said, like, oh, I always, I always think it's ridiculous. And I said, what do you mean? He said, are you really going to say that this person's art is better than this person's art? And I understand where it's coming from because, mm-hmm. you know, if you look back on certain movies or certain performances, what's to say mm-hmm. this is better than this? Yeah, it's and- it's a, it's subjective at that point. Mm-hmm. When you have when you have these these actors and actresses, I mean, sometimes there is an actor who is baby who does is the standout and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But um, but when you have so many people who are so good at the top of their game, and you're gonna say, you know, oh. This is, this guy's better than this guy. What are you judging that off? Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I, I don't, I don't know. I think it's, mm-hmm. and I do think it is. I think it is. You know, um, I think it's political too. I think the political. I think it's political in the sense where, you know, I look back to the year where Matthew McConaughey won for Dallas Buyers Club mm-hmm. and Leonardo mm-hmm. DiCaprio didn't win for Wolf of Wall Street. Mm-hmm. You know. I thought both of their performances were sensational. I don't think either one... I mean, there has to be a winner, but I don't think either one deserved it over another... Yeah, they were like, it was pretty harder to... It was harder to pick. Right, it was... It was it harder was, to pick who, who over who. It, mm-hmm. was, it was neck and neck, and for Hollywood, though, who are you going to give the award to? The guy who portrayed someone with AIDS, or the... Wall, the Wolf of Wall Street, the, the, the broker, the, the, the broker, broker. The bro- like, wh- <laughs> yeah. right? Like, who, who are you going to give the award to? Like, mm-hmm. you're obviously, you know, going to give it to the cause that you want to bring the most attention to. Mm-hmm. So, I certainly think that plays a huge factor in it as well. Um, mm-hmm. But well, no, it's you know, it goes into the idea of like, there's certain movies that people consider Oscar bait. You know what right. I'm saying? That they, right. there's such a message behind it mm-hmm. that it's going to win. For example, yeah. now, I haven't seen it yet. Moonlight. Moonlight. Mm-hmm. I'm, Moon, I'm in yeah. the same. I haven't seen it myself, but yeah. apparently what it touches upon is definitely it's homo. It's homosexual themes in it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Somebody growing up, coming of age, homosexual yeah. themes. Especially in an African American right? house, household. Thinking that's... of it, that's a very resonant. Like a, that theme resonates so hard. With like, you might not be homosexual, but the theme of growing up and everything else around it is so like powerful to people. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. So there's certain times where you look at a, a nomination, look at the winners. You can't tell if they won because of the movie actually being quality. Or if it's mm-hmm. something they represent, you know what I mean? Right, yeah, yeah. right. The, the fu- well, the year that uh, Argo. Mm-hmm. Did you see Argo? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did. The year Argo won, one of my teachers was like, "Oh my god, how can this movie win?" And I'm like, "And we're like, well, it was a good movie. It's like it was a good movie, but did you think it was the best movie of the no, year? Not at all. Not at all. It was solid. Like, don't get me wrong. <laughs> right. And and they said and they said too. They're like, "Why?" My teacher said he goes, "Why did why did Argo win?" And we're like, "Well, we don't know." He says, "Well, who was the hero in Argo?" It was Hollywood. Hollywood got the the uh, the people who were hostages mm-hmm. out of the embassy 
like Hollywood, like Hollywood contrived yeah. a plan to extract them. So oh, okay. Hollywood was the hero. So of course they're going to push that. Mm. You know what I mean? It, yeah. it, it always goes there's, back. There's like to, a, there's like an agenda wow. sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Right, mm. right. And I don't think it's like that every year. Um, and again, I, I don't want to. I'm not like trying to bash these things. They're obviously incredible pieces. They're yeah. incredible performances mm-hmm. and and whatnot. But you know, the person that's going to win the award, what's going to tip the iceberg, is what we you know what we're trying to get out. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense, like what what you know, if it, the tiebreaker is right, the agenda. Yeah, if it gets to that, that's point. what it is. When it when it when it's a very very neck and neck race, it's more about what you're looking because you need something to put it over the top. Mm-hmm. Two things you might look at, you might love both movies, but at the end of the day, like we said, you're gonna give it to what was the example we said? It was oh, something along Moonlight. Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf yeah, Wolf of Wall, Wall Street, Street right. or Dallas Buyers Club. Mm-hmm. The Broker Who's Greedy. Crazy movie, though, man. One of the best oh, movies exactly. in recent history. A crazy movie. But over Dallas Buyers Club, which I have seen, and it has some powerful performance. Mm-hmm. You have yeah, yeah. Matthew McConaughey's age stricken. Jared Leto is like a woman. Jared Leto. I didn't even recognize Jared Leto. Yeah, that's Leto. what I'm saying. He was like yeah. a woman in that movie. So I, I could kind of see where it comes from. And I, and I love that movie, too. And I, I think both of those movies were equally brilliant in their own right. Mm-hmm. You know, but exactly. Yeah. What's... Well, we better. Better. Yeah, you know, man, I'm gonna keep true. it honest with you, man. I thought 2013 the best movie was Django Unchained. I'm Django just, Unchained. I'm looking, at the, I'm looking at the nominations <laughs> right now. It was Django Unchained, obviously Argo, Amor, probably a foreign film. Haven't really mm-hmm. seen it. Beast of the Southern Wild. Oh, Amor Wild. was great. Amor mm-hmm. was brilliant too. Amor Beast was really of the Southern Wild. Django Unchained. Le Miserable. Uh, Life of Pi was really good. It's all recently. Was mm-hmm. Lincoln was really, really good. Very slow burn movie, but if you can deal with it, very, very solid. Mm-hmm. Silver Linings Playbook, really fun movie. Yeah. Loved it. Loved it. And yeah, Zero Dark Dirty, which I haven't seen. Okay, that was a pretty solid year for that. Yeah, yeah so we're going to take another quick break and we'll be right back. 